We're gonna whack some nuts. Oh, whoa, there's a magic that happens. You're a little nuts, to be I, fair. A back to back, sort of spooning each other like lovers in the night. Am I nervous? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. I am feeling pretty good about this dish. Welcome to Farm to Fork. I'm Nick Benninger. Farm to Fork is made possible with the generous support of Explore Waterloo Region. For a comprehensive guide on where to eat and what to see and do in the area, visit explorewaterloo.ca. With concert flautist and palliative care worker on her resume, it's no wonder Liz Burrow is a little nutty. Hey Liz, how are you? Oh hey, welcome to the Nut Farm. Thanks a lot. Not for surprisingly, me. she runs Jewels Under the Kilt. So what else would she grow besides nuts? In 2010, long-term health care had taken its toll on her mental health. So she purchased a 100-year-old farmhouse near Fergus, Ontario. Not one to sit around idly, she noticed a lot of nut trees on the property. And, as they say, the rest is history. I was eating a lot of nuts, and when you eat as much nuts as I do, Sometimes raw gets really pretty bad. And so I started masking with maple syrup. Um, and I found out that I could make this really nice roasted nut but still have the nutritional value intact. And I started going to farmer's markets. And then I decided we needed a name. We've been jewels under the kilt ever since. Right on, well I love the name. It's a, such a great talking point and I think it really tells us right away <laughs> there's a good time to be had. We really want to open up a world uh, of differences. The company is centered around my daughter and my daughter has some disabilities, uh, really capabilities, um, but she's had to learn to do things differently. So um, that's how we run the company. It's the same, we do things a little bit different. So I started the Up Syndrome movement, although a lot of people have caught on. Down syndrome denotes that they're not capable of doing stuff, but that's not true. There are so many, what I call Up Syndrome moments, and we have many here on the Nut Farm. <laughs> I would love to see some of the jobs here. Do you want to see the nuts first? That'd be a great place to start. Okay, let's go. I am a proponent of mixed nuts, so I put in pecan, I put in two chestnuts only, a few hazelnuts, and that's it, the first year. So we have the pine trees in here, and here's one right here. It's a uh, Korean pine. It is about three years old. Wow. You really got to nurture it. I would have think that a rabbit would come along and chomp that thing off. They, on you. You'd be surprised. This is the one tree they really don't. In terms of uh, rodent protection, generally we keep um, wildflowers pretty much above my head because the rodents won't run in there. So this tree here, this is a hazelnut. I saw some really good catkins here, uh, right here. It goes into dormancy, but these catkins are already producing already a living entity that when we have that one week in March where it's beautiful, these guys will elongate and propagate this tree. So you'll be guaranteed some nuts. So this is an American chestnut. I really am looking forward to the flowers. Chestnut flowers are amazing. The bees make an incredible honey. So these are our hives. We normally have quite a few in here and they're usually a couple stacked high. The ultimate goal is that we get some chestnut honey, which is a very different flavor. So we've put up a lot of uh, chestnuts on the farm just to get this kind of honey. Cool. I love what Liz is doing out here. I love how much she cares for her trees and the property. It's pretty cold and wet though, so I'm excited to get inside. Next, we're going into the kitchen and I can't wait to warm up and eat some nuts. Why don't we come in and see where the magic's happening? Awesome. We do all our roasting in here. We have our Moffitt. Everything we do right now is hands-on. So between the roasters and our lovely bagger over here, everything is in hand. So for roasting walnuts, we bring out the walnuts um, the night before. The ingredients get all tossed and mixed together. The syrup is added. We mix all of that in. We process our own ingredients. So our habaneros, we process ourselves and you'll see. Oh, that's so nice. That's so like fruity and um, 
and then it gets a little tickly in the sinuses there, but yeah. that's amazing. I think the way that Liz roasts her nuts is really neat. The way she uses maple syrup to preserve them without adding too much sweetness. I think I want to play on the sweeter side of life today. I'm interested to see where I go with this. Food is an art form. As a chef, you're an artist. I'm a concert flutist. People's love became their job, so they no longer had the heart for the music. And to me, the music didn't sound good anymore. But food became that art, that music for me. I'd love to be able to help. Is there anything I can do? Oh yeah, we got some nuts you can crack. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, what do you mean? Uh, well, I typically find men can't crack nuts. Really? So we'll go see. Well, I'm a pretty sensitive modern fella, so I'm up to the challenge All and right. I'd like to accept it. Okay, let's go. Well, Liz, this looks suspiciously like it's got my name all over it. Yeah, we're gonna whack some nuts. Oh, wonderful. So, these are heart nuts. They do not have a cracker made that will crack these, so you always have to do them by hand. It's one to three taps on the hump. You'll hear a pop. Oh, right on cue. <laughs> I think this is the perfect nut for just cracking. Don't cook with it, don't do anything with it. Awesome. So do I get to try you one? You get to try. Oh, you did it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I got a, I got chopped nut pudding here. So I'm going to put this one up here. This is for babies. <laughs> this okay, is for this is like for, me. yeah. So it's got a little welt in here for you. It's a little more secure. You did it. I did it. But can I liberate I it? I don't know if you can get it out, but that's okay. It's one of these days. Maybe I'll <laughs> go home with a bag and practice at home. <laughs> yeah. I've toured the property, we've been in the kitchen, I've eaten nuts on nuts on nuts. I think I know exactly what I'm gonna cook for Liz and it's time to get cracking. I've decided I'm gonna make apple tart to tan. I'm gonna incorporate some savory elements to it, including her chipotle roasted pecans. I'm also gonna garnish it with a little bit of chev uh, or ghost cheese, and then I'm gonna finish it with some of her amazing maple crumbles. So I'm gonna start by peeling my apples and then cut them in half. I wanna caramelize this honey, which means sort of scorching it a little bit. I'm just gonna literally take those apples and just set them right down, back to back, sort of spooning each other like lovers in the night. Next thing we're gonna do is add a healthy amount of butter. Add a little dash of sherry wine vinegar. We're working with the maple chipotle nuts. These are fantastically delicious. I want to make sure that enough of that flavor from those chipotles carries through into the dish. I've got this beautiful pastry that we make back at the bakery, and I'm just gonna delicately drop it on top. The final thing to do now is to get some temperature going. I'm just gonna prepare up our garnish. So what I've got is this beautiful goat's cheese, and I'm just gonna roll them into quenelles, and I'm just kind of dunking those quenelles into a little bit of this maple crunch. I will just keep repeating that process. Our tart has rested, it's cooled off enough. Now it's time for the big flip. Ugh. Flip successfully. Oh, 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 that looks pretty good. It is a little dark, but let me taste one. It's not burnt, but we're good. I'm just gonna arrange these on top. There you have it, folks. That's our apple tart to tan with caramelized chipotle pecans. I'm excited about this. Let's go find our friends and let's share some lunch. Hi, ladies. Hello. Hello. How are you? Awesome. Good. So. I made apple tart to tin. I layered in your chipotle roasted nuts to give it a little bit of a spice, a little bit of a savory note. We've got apples on top of that. I caramelized some of your honey to give it some depth of flavor. And then on top, we've got some goat's cheese that I just put through a bit of a quenelle and then rolled it in your maple crumble. I hope you're excited to dig in. Let's oh see. yeah, it looks awesome. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You really get the chipotle if you can't through. Mm -hmm. Can you taste it? Should be at the back of your mouth to eat. Now, you know it takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> that layer of chipotle pecan is the best part. <laughs> oh, I figured you'd say that. <laughs>
Well, ladies, uh, I just want to thank you for having me here today. It was an awesome afternoon and, and day spent with you despite this weather. Your warm hospitality certainly made up for it. And I learned a ton. I just want to thank you for including me and uh, allowing me to spend the day with you guys and cook you up something with your product. Thank All you right. for coming. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I like to share nuts. <laughs> awesome. Cheers <laughs> to that.